Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to Radio K Sports, Real Sports Radio. Coming to you live from 3M Arena at Mariucci, I'm Jason Rutman. Tonight's matchup is the third time this season that the Golden Gophers will take on their rivals from just across the border, the Wisconsin Badgers. The first two games were close. The first one going into overtime with the Wisconsin Badgers picking up a 4-3 victory courtesy of Brock Caulfield, who tied the game in the third and then eventually scored the overtime winner about three minutes in. The second game was all Golden Gophers, a 4-1 victory in Madison. Four different maroon and gold sweater-wearing players found the back of the net for Minnesota as the then number five ranked Golden Gophers split the series with Wisconsin. Currently, the Golden Gophers are sitting at number four in the nation in terms of rankings. 21-11-0 is their record. 16-6-0 is good enough for first in the Big Ten. They have been red hot lately. A six-game win streak coming into this one where they have outscored their opponents 24-11 during that span. A few Golden Gophers will be reaching milestones this evening, including Bryce Brodzinski, the Philadelphia Flyers prospect, who will be skating in his 100th game, the fifth player on the team to do so. For the Wisconsin Badgers, they are coming off a weekend where they did not have to play hockey. They got a little bit of extra time to prepare for this Golden Gopher squad. But before that, they split a series against Notre Dame, who's ranked number 11 in the nation. However, before that, they had lost six straight. That Notre Dame series was a critical one for them. However, it has not been the season that they were hoping for, sitting at 9-20-3 and, and fifth in the Big Ten with a 6-15 and one record. They've been hit by COVID, they've been hit by the injury bug, and they will look to continue to play some good hockey here against the Golden Gophers after bouncing back against Notre Dame. All time, this is one of the most historic series of all time. This is matchup number 301, dating back to January 1992. So over 100 years of border battle hockey. The Golden Gophers have an advantage in terms of wins there, 176, 100, 24 is the record of the Golden Gophers all time against Wisconsin. For Minnesota, they got some reinforcements back last weekend in the form of three Olympians, Ben Myers, Brock Faber, and Matthew Nyes. They helped lead Team USA to a fifth place finish in the Beijing Games. For Wisconsin, they had no Olympians representing them, so their team has remained intact throughout the past few weeks. Right now, we are gonna head to the National Anthem. We'll stay live and let you listen in. Lift every voice and sing, and then the Spar Spangled Banner. We'll be back with you for a little bit more recap in just a moment on Radio K Sports.
student section here at 3M Arena at Miriuji is packed to the brim with fans clad in maroon and gold hoping to see their Golden Gophers pick up a 22nd victory of the season. Starting lineups are out for both teams, the Wisconsin Badgers, top line Brock Caulfield at center, Carson Bansell at left wing, Matthew Desant foul at right wing. Second line, Dominic Mersch at center, Braden Morrison at left wing, Max Johnson, the grad transfer, is at right wing. Ryder Donovan, Jake Gorniak, Liam Malquist make up the third line for the Badgers. Caden Brown, Zach Erdahl, Sam Stange make up the fourth. On defense for Wisconsin, Tyler Inamoto and Corson Kulemans are paired together. Jesper Peltonen and Anthony Kerr, Josh S. and Luke Lamaster are together. And the extra skater is Shea Donovan. The netminder for the Badgers, former Golden Gopher Jared Moe. We'll get into him a little bit more in a minute. For the Golden Gophers, Walker, McLaughlin, Brodzinski on the top line, Huglin, Bros, Pitlick make up line number two, Nelson, Crookshank, Perbix three, Myers, Nyes, Nevers are the final offensive set. On defense, Stoddicker and Lacomer together, Johnson and Faber are a pair, Ben Brinkman and Mike Kester are the third defensive duo. The extra skater for Minnesota, Johnny Sorensen, and in net, Justin Close, the junior from Kindersley, Saskatchewan. And with that, we have puck drop here in Minneapolis, draw one by Minnesota, back to Matthew Nyes. Golden Gophers wearing their standard home white uniforms with maroon numbers, yellow accents. Wisconsin Badgers in their cardinal red uniforms with white lettering. 20 seconds in here in Minneapolis. Wisconsin with the puck tipped in deep by Jake Gorniak, Montreal Canadiens prospect. Played up the wall and pushed to neutral by Walker. He has that puck stripped from him, and the Badgers will turn it around, try and go the other way. Pass too long for DeSant Fell. And it'll be Brodzinski picking it up on the board, skating in his 100th career game in a gopher sweater. Now into the corner. Close, looking on intently. And gophers are able to break out. Here they come, up the wing. Dumped it on net. Mo easily able to steer it into a corner. And Brodzinski will go to work trying to dig it out. He'll lose that battle. Caden Brown is the one who comes up with it. And he'll flip it around the boards. High into the air. It'll stick right by the blue line. And now they're going to say offsides is going to go against the Golden Gophers. For Minnesota, the line they have to really worry about is this top line for Wisconsin. Carson Bantle, Brock Caulfield, and Matthew DeSant fell. They have been red hot recently. Brock Caulfield has two goals and an assist already this season against the Golden Gophers. Carson Bantle, only player on this Wisconsin roster who has a positive plus minus. He's plus two as the draw is one back towards the Gopher end. Turned over in the defensive zone. Shot on net goes a little bit wide of Justin Close. And we will play on. A minute and a half has elapsed here in Minneapolis. 0-0 remains the score. Gophers trying to force it through neutral ice are able to do so successfully. Played around by Mo. Mo was the backup to Jack LaFontaine the past two years. Posted a 9-5-1 record as a Golden Gopher. This season he's played some great hockey and he was awarded by being named one of the finalists for the Mike Richter Award. Of course, Mike Richter, one of the greatest goalies in collegiate hockey history, went on to have an illustrious NHL career that included a Stanley Cup as this one is shot on net from the point by Wisconsin, easily steered away by Close. And now cleared up the boards, bounces off the back of Crookshank, and it'll find Mike Kester. Kester to neutral, finds Perbix. Perbix dumps it in, it'll be scooped up by Jesper Peltonen out of Helsinki, Finland. And now played around to the near half wall. Gophers battle for it. Stenge was there, jamming at it. And the Badgers will pick it up, but they wipe out behind their own net. 
and eventually force it to neutral. This one cleared ahead into the offensive zone for Minnesota. Pressuring there was Grant Cruikshank. Cruikshank had two goals in the second game of the series against Penn State. Minnesota overcame a three goal deficit in that one, ended up winning six to four to extend their W streak to six. Here come the Badgers the other way. It's Gorniak trying to find some space, cut off by Faber, really good defense from him there. And now played around the boards. Tossed in front, that was Luke Lamaster there. And no one was there to receive. Drop down behind the net, Ryan Johnson picks it up for Minnesota. He'll force it up the boards and the pass is a little bit too far for Nevers. However, it'll be played by Mo, and he will flick it towards the boards and out of play, so we'll have a face-off upcoming here. In terms of face-offs, these two teams are pretty evenly matched. The Golden Gophers win 50.6% of their draws. The Wisconsin Badgers, 50.5. For Minnesota, it will be Sammy Walker taking the draw. He's riding a five-game point streak coming into this one. He wins it, quick shot from the top of the circle, flew a little bit high. Behind the Wisconsin net now. Defensive pairing, working to clear it out. They get it ahead, Matthew Descent fell, went to try and touch it, but it goes a little bit too far for him. It'll be icing against the Badgers. Draws coming to the left of Mo Against the Golden Gophers, this season, Mo was really good when they played in Madison back in November. He went 1-0-0 with a 966 save percentage. Other netminder on the roster, sophomore Cameron Rowe. There's a chance he might start tomorrow, but with the way that Mo has been playing, no guarantees there. Draw one by the Badgers. They chip it into the Gopher offensive end, only to have it forced back out to neutral. They play it around. Brock Caulfield regathers the puck and enters the zone. Stodaker there to play defense, and he'll scoop it up, move back the other way. He gets checked up against the boards in neutral. Forces it back to Walker, who walks in. He fired one that never got through. And this puck will trickle back out to neutral. Faber there to retrieve. He'll dump it in. The Golden Gophers will get their second line out. Bros, Huglin, Pitlick. This one played into the corner in the Minnesota defensive end. Here's Huglin. Outlets to Bros. Bros walks in with some space and he lost the puck around the circle. Recovers, looking for some help. Gives back to Johnson. This one tipped ahead and it'll bounce off a Wisconsin player, fall harmlessly to the ice, and the Badgers will begin their ascent the other way. Ryan Johnson with it now. The Badgers, with some tired legs, elected to just dump it in and go for a chains. Now Bros sends it all the way behind the net towards the far half wall. And this one will escape. Kester dumps it back in. Minnesota regroups at neutral and prepares for the offensive rush by Wisconsin. Here they come with speed. Getting checked into the boards there was Caden Brown as... The Gophers are able to scoop the puck back up and play it to neutral. Shots on goal read 1-0 in favor of Wisconsin. Six minutes into this one. Badgers average around the same amount of shots as Minnesota as Cruikshank enters, centers it, fires, and they score! The Golden Gophers get on the board early. Grant Cruikshank centered the puck, and it was finished off. Minnesota 1-0 early. Their first shot of the game finds the back of the net. Grant Cruikshank continues to play some great offense here. He's able to find Johnny Sorensen in the middle of the ice in between the hash marks, and he rips it five hole for Minnesota. The fans all on their feet here. There's no atmosphere like a border battle atmosphere, especially in Minnesota. Minnesota. 
So the Gophers get a goal from Sorensen, assisted by Crookshank and Mike Kester. Occurs at the 6.08 mark of the first. Now Nyes, he tries to center one for Lacombe, walks in, fires, that shot got tipped a little high and out of play. So Minnesota with a few good offensive chances here as they start to come alive after a sluggish start. Didn't put a shot on goal towards Mo for the first six minutes and change. The first one they take goes into the back of the net. And now it looks like a penalty is going to be assessed after the play. Ryder Donovan, the junior from Duluth, Minnesota, will take a seat in the box. Wisconsin, one of five teams in the nation, another one of these teams being the Golden Gophers, that takes less than three penalties per game on average. However, their PK has not been exceptional this season. 60 for 84, that equates to a tad over 71%. Gophers set up in the offensive zone after winning the draw. Down low for Walker. Skates towards the top of the near circle and now gets it back to the point. Johnson had it, dished it across. Now back to Johnson, he looks, sends to Walker near half wall. Kester with it now. Gophers with two defensemen, three forwards on the ice for this PP. And here is McLaughlin wheeling. McLaughlin scored his 100th career point against Penn State last weekend, becoming the 86th Golden Gopher to do so. As the Badgers are able to clear, Walker scoops it up, and they re-enter. McLaughlin back to Walker. He gets pinned against the boards as the Badgers try and regain possession. It's a mad scramble, seven players involved. The Badgers eventually come up with it and send it all the way down to Justin Close. Just under a minute left, in the man advantage for Minnesota. Ben Myers, who had three goals, pardon me, three assists in his first game back from the Olympics, has it. Now Lacombe, over to Myers. Myers gets checked, Nevers down there. Nevers leads the team with four power play goals. He has it in front, tries to center it, couldn't get there. Here's Huglin who rips one. Nice kick save by Mo. Gophers keep it in. Back to Lacombe. Lacombe holds. Sends it cross ice. He gets it back. Now Huglin tried to get it in front for a tip. Never got through. Good sticks there by the Wisconsin PK unit. As the Gophers try and flush it home from behind the net, unable to do so to go all the way down. And they might have one more chance for a rush. Six seconds left on the man advantage for the Donovan penalty. Lacombe in with speed. Lacombe tosses one on net, harmlessly kicked aside as the penalty expires and the Badgers return to full strength. Here's a chance in front for De La Salle and he can't get it. Matthew Desant foul denied by Justin Close. Stuck out that big left leg pad in order to make the save. Second shot on goal for Wisconsin. They circle in neutral. Trying to feed it ahead there to Sam Stange. He couldn't pick it up. Stange, sophomore from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, selected by the Detroit Red Wings with the 97th pick in the NHL entry draft. He has it now. Tosses it to Erdahl, and he will send it all the way in. Now for Minnesota, it's Perbix. Herbix scrambles and ends up tossing it all the way down low before heading off for a change. Minnesota steal in the offensive zone. Big save there by Mo. Tristan Bros with it now. His pass to Pitlick got intercepted, but Pitlick with some good sustained pressure keeps it in the zone for the Golden Gophers. Back to the point. Here's a good look. Kester fires that one right into the glove of Mo Huglin right on the doorstep for the rebound, but there was none. And so we will get our first stoppage of play here in Minneapolis with the Golden Gophers leading one to nothing with 9.46 left in the first. You're listening to Big Ten Men's Hockey on Radio K Sports.
players return to the ice here in Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers holding on to a 1-0 lead courtesy of a Johnny Sorensen goal. For Sorensen, his fourth goal of the season, fourth point of the season. He's the extra skater for Minnesota. Swiss Army Knife for the team, one of the better hustlers that they have. Lined up at the faceoff dot for the Golden Gophers, Aaron Huglin, freshman from Rosso, Minnesota. Stands at six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. He's a Buffalo Sabres prospect, and we're just about ready to resume play. Puck is dropped, and it'll be won back by Dominic Mersch. This one immediately tossed towards the boards and finds its way into the seat. So a fan walking away with a nice souvenir. And we will redo the draw to the left of Jared Moe. Mersch and Huglin to take it again. And Mersch will emerge Victoria, victorious excuse me, for the second straight time. Wisconsin to neutral, Max Johnson had it. He pushed it ahead as the Badgers set up in their offensive zone, looking for a tip in front with Anthony Kerr, who scored his first goal of the season against Notre Dame the last time the Badgers took the ice. As here comes Pitlick, he has a break, he walks in, fires, save! Moe is able to shut him down as he tries to go five hole. But for Pitlick, a really good look after an outlet pass all the way up the ice. He had a step on Jesper Pelton and his man and got off a clean look against Moe. Now on the ice for Minnesota, taking the draw is Jackson Nelson. Pardon me, that's Blake McLaughlin. He tosses one on net, big save there, as it'll rotate around the boards. Minnesota trying to kick it back to the point they're unable to do so thanks to a nice play by Ryder Donovan. However, it comes back to McLaughlin. McLaughlin off the boards to Johnson. Johnson spins around as he skates down low, looking for some help, and now decides to circle it around the wall. This one finds its way to neutral and now all the way back to the Gophers defensive zone. They try and push it up ice, but the puck was bouncing and the Badgers recover. They re-enter. DeSaint Fowl is there and he can't get the puck to sit on his stick or get the shot away. Now Max Johnson. Johnson checked into the boards as they continue to chip at it. Here's Donovan, he fires one, that was saved, couldn't be controlled by Justin Close, so the Badgers are able to reset. Long shot from the point, tipped by Brodzinski. Nice defensive play by him, as they continue to chip at it. McLaughlin picks up the steal, and he will send it rink wide and into the Badger zone, only for it to be cleared back up and received by Carson Bantel. Bantle has it stripped from his stick. Now Kerr, behind the net. The Gophers working hard to get this puck out of the zone. The most sustained pressure the Badgers have had. They're finally able to do so. Matthew Nyes, freshman walks in, crosses, they fire, huge save. Oh my goodness, doing the splits there is Jared Moe, and he's able to secure the puck without any more damage. Great setup there by Matthew Nyes as he rips it across the ice to his line mate. Shot goes on net and nothing more comes of it. Ben Myers was the one sitting there on the doorstep looking for the rebound. Nevers was the man who took the shot. So the draw will be to the left of Mo again, one back to Lacombe. Lacombe leads the team in plus minus tied with Pitlick at plus 18. Now down low in the corner, they'll battle for it. Caden Brown had it momentarily. Golden Gophers able to recover. Staudicker on the ice, his first shift of the game. And he's able to get it ahead to Perbix. Perbix gets pushed into the corner and has to toss it back out to neutral. Staudicker tries to reset, has his pass picked off. 
but the puck was bouncing and Minnesota will turn it the other way. This one harmlessly dumped in as Minnesota gets a change off. Aaron Huglin onto the ice with speed, picks it up in the offensive zone, immediately gets checked into the curvature of the boards. Now back to Faber who can't control it and it'll find its way to neutral. Tristan Bros scoops it up, trying to catch the Badgers in a line change. He pushes it ahead. Here come the Gophers. Oh, what a move by Huglen as he's able to create some space for himself. Now Bros in front. Pitlick tried a shot. That one goes a little bit wide left of the post. Errant pass by the Golden Gophers. Sends the puck all the way back down to Justin Close, who launches it back to neutral. This one bounces off the stick of Bros and will end up in the corner to the right of close. Ryan Johnson has it there. He gets a little bit tripped up and hits the deck. Pitlick can't get it out as the Badgers play it at the half wall. Here's Kuhlemans, Corson Kuhlemans, team leader in points and assists as a true freshman. He's able to get it to Ryder Donovan who falls down. Johnson picks it up, gets it to Faber and the Gophers are gonna be able to get it out. Bros with speed through neutral, three on three. As some confusion there between him and Sammy Walker leads to an offsides. 525 in the first. If you're just joining us, Jason Rutman here on Radio K Sports. It's a border battle. Matchup number 301 all time between the Golden Gophers and Wisconsin Badgers. Minnesota looking to extend their win streak to seven. The Wisconsin Badgers looking to play spoiler against their rivals. McLaughlin looked to receive a pass near the blue line. It ended up being tipped into the Wisconsin bench, so we'll redo the neutral ice draw here. This one will occur at the center faceoff circle. Walker to take it for Minnesota, and he will lose that one. Gophers typically a pretty decent team at the faceoff circle, but tonight seems to be more so in favor of Wisconsin. They lead six to five in that category. Puck now in neutral. McLaughlin backhands it ahead. Taken here by Carson Bantle, the Coyotes prospect, but the Gophers recover. Retaken by Bantle. He steals it, walks in two on three, and good defense there by Ben Brinkman to break up the rush for Wisconsin. Now Brinkman through neutral, sends it high into the air and it'll fall near Mo, but picked up by one of his defensemen before he has to play it. Here comes Stangy. Stangy gets checked by Staudacker. Loses the puck behind the net, Lacombe is there. He's able to chip it ahead to Nyes. Nyes with the defender riding his back, spins around, looking to get it out, dekes a man and he will. Here he comes, Ben Myers to his right as we will get whistles. It looks like another offsides against the Golden Gophers as Nyes got a little bit tripped up on his entry and Myers skated a little bit too far. Shots on goal read 7-3 in favor of the Golden Gophers. Minnesota's lone goal coming from Johnny Sorensen, his fourth of the season assisted by Grant Cruikshank and Mike Kester. Staudacher gets it back after Minnesota wins the neutralized draw, sends it to Lacombe who enters. He tries to drop it back. Nevers had a good look, but couldn't finish off the shot. Now the Badgers the other way. It's a foot race that Lacombe will win over Max Johnson. Johnson has 130 career points. That's the third most among NCAA Division I skaters who are playing right now. And here come the Gophers the other way. It might be a three on two. Myers over to Nyes, and Nyes can't control it, so it'll find its way into the corner. Myers picks it back up, circles behind the net, looking for some help, wheels around, gets it back to the point. Here's a shot from Faber right into the glove of Moe, who will freeze it for a faceoff. 326 left in the first, the Golden Gophers Still with a 1-0 lead. Faceoff will be to the left 
of Mo. And it will be lost by Jackson Nelson. Badgers enter the go for offensive zone. Minnesota recovers. Crookshank clears it out. This one's going to go all the way down. The referees wave off icing. Johnny Sorensen is there to pick it up. He puts it in front and a good chance broken up by the defense. Here's Faber with the shot. That one hits the crossbar. Brock Faber nearly rifled home a second goal for Minnesota, but was denied by the iron. Now the Badgers regroup. Tossed ahead to neutral, and they walk in with speed. Close is able to clear the bouncing puck to the corner. Liam Malmquist was right there, but quickly picked up by Carson Bantle. Bantle behind the net, tries to spin away from Kester. Kester pins him to the boards. Four players chipping it down low. Nelson in there for Minnesota. Out to Johnson, who was standing in front of the net. And back down low for the Badgers. Here's a chance in front, shot block there. Jackson Lacombe, or pardon me, that was Grant Crookshank who got his body in front of that one. And here's another shot from the point, this one. Easily saved off the leg pad and into the glove of Mo. The coaching matchup in this one is interesting. For the Golden Gophers, of course, you have Bob Motzko, who spent 13 seasons at St. Cloud State as the bench boss, now here with the Golden Gophers. He led them to a Big Ten championship over these Wisconsin Badgers last year. For Wisconsin, head coach Tony Granado is leading them for the sixth season. Granado was a coach in the NHL for 13 years after a 13 year playing career, including head coaching stints for the Colorado Avalanche and assistant coaching stints for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Very, very well established. As this one, shot on net, but no, says Justin Close. A little flick shot from about 40 feet out, he's able to deny. Now Minnesota gets it to neutral. Tristan Bros walks in. Thought Pitlick was trailing him, but it ends up being a turnover, and the Badgers will toss it all the way back down in and head off for a change. Outlet pass from Faber just missed Bros. And it'll be Huglin taking a dive in the corner as he tried to play that puck. Now Faber over to Johnson, back to Faber. Faber, one of three Golden Gophers representing the red, white, and blue in the Olympics. The most efficient to those three was Ben Myers, who had two goals, two assists for Team USA. Here's McLaughlin with a move, walks in, fires. This one's saved by Mo. McLaughlin can't recover his own rebound. The Badgers start back the other way. Under a minute in the first now. Ahead to Stenge. Stenge gets it back to Jake Gorniak, and they'll chip at it in the corner. Tony Granado already shifting up the lines here for this Golden Gopher team. 38 seconds now. Minnesota able to send it all the way down. They're not going to give much of a chase to this one as they get four new skaters onto the ice. The only one who remains is Brodzinski. Now cleared in down low. Kester there able to force it away from Johnson and Huglin had it momentarily, got checked into the boards and lost it. Wisconsin plays it around 3 2 1, and that will do it for the end of the first period of play. The Golden Gophers lead by a score of 1 to nothing. Nine shots to three is the margin for them, and we will be right back on Radio K Sports for our intermission report and more second half action in just a minute.
A little over two minutes before players return to the ice for the second period of action. Jason Rutman here with Radio K Sports, Golden Gophers holding on to a 1-0 lead over the Wisconsin Badgers. The Gophers got their goal courtesy of Johnny Sorensen after Kester sent the puck down low to Crookshank. Crookshank from behind the net was able to center it and Sorensen finished it off for Minnesota a little bit over six minutes in. Taking a look at some of the statistics for this shooting the Wisconsin Badgers, nine to three, Minnesota 0 for one on the power play. Ryder Donovan was the man who picked up the call for Wisconsin. Face-offs favor the Golden Gophers after Wisconsin got out to a hot start on the dot. Nine to six is what the Gophers are seeing in that category. And in terms of block shots, three to two in favor of Minnesota. Golden Gophers best face-off man so far has been Ben Myers. He's three of four at the dot, and he had a huge game at the dot when he returned from the Olympics, going 10 and three against the Penn State Nittany Lions centers. For Wisconsin, at the intermission, you have to think that head coach Tony Granato is gonna make, look to make some adjustments with the effort. Only three shots on goal is not gonna do it when you have to test a solid netminder in Justin Close, someone who has a 924 save percentage this year. He's filled in tremendously for Jack LaFontaine, who went to the Carolina Hurricanes earlier this season. About 200 feet down on the other side of the ice, Jared Moore, Jared Moe, former Golden Gopher and New Prague, Minnesota native, has made eight saves on nine shots. A few of them have been dandies using his leg pads especially well this evening. The Golden Gophers nearly got a second goal when Brock Faber absolutely rifled a wrister off the crossbar. But it stayed out and so the score remains one nothing in favor of Minnesota. Just about ready to get underway here. It'll be Myers winning the draw for the Golden Gophers, his fourth win of the day. Gophers and Badgers Minnesota lost one in overtime and won one in regulation the last time they played this team back on November 5th and 6th at the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Puck went all the way down for icing, so the Golden Gophers will have an offensive zone draw to the right of Mo. Myers to take it again, and the referee said, that Matthew Descent fell, jumped early, so we'll redo it. Pardon me, that was Ryder Donovan. Myers wins the draw, back to Lacombe, who puts one on net. That one couldn't be controlled by Mo, and it ends up falling about four inches wide of the post. Now Myers, he walks in towards the near dot, circles around, looking for some help, crosses it, chance in front, another big save by Mo. Matthew Nyes with the shot attempt. Now Nyes gets it to Nevers. Nevers back to Lacombe who shoots. This one blocked in front. Second chance opportunity by Nevers. Never got through. Matthew Nyes in the corner. Sends it to Nevers. Nevers near half wall. He hits the deck penalty coming up against the Badgers. It'll be their second of the game. And Minnesota will have a chance on the man advantage. 0 for 1 their first time out. It's going to be a tripping call. It's just a matter of who they assess it to. It looks like it's gonna go against number 23, Liam Malmquist, the freshman from Edina, Minnesota. So the Golden Gophers, who have scored 21 power play goals this season, will look to tack on their 22nd and extend their lead to two nothing. Gophers go with McLaughlin, Walker, Johnson, who has the puck now. Slides it across to his defensive partner. And now McLaughlin again. McLaughlin down low, banks it off the boards. Here's Walker. Walker back to the point. Kester with it, now he one times it. That one no good, pass in front, rebound, save. And the net comes off its mooring, so we'll get a stoppage of play. The fans not happy here, but 
it seemed like a genuine effort by Mo to cross his crease, and in the process, he just knocked the net off. Getting a look at the replay now, and he was just trying to move laterally across the goal mouth and ended up making incidental contact with that far post, causing it to become unsettled. So we'll have a face-off again in the offensive zone. McLaughlin to take it for Minnesota. Brodzinski on the ice along him. And here's Johnson. Now McLaughlin, bottom of the near circle. He walks in, fires. That one's saved by the pad of Moe, who's able to cover it up. He's now made 12 saves in the game. Golden Gophers getting a few good looks on this power play here that still has a minute 27 left. On the season, Golden Gopher power play operating at about 18%. Wisconsin penalty kill a little bit over 71%. Back to the point. Now Johnson with it. Circles around. Gets it back to Kester. Kester whiffed on the shot, and the Badgers are going to take it back the other way. Here they come. It's Gorniak. He'll spin around, kill some time, and now flip it around the boards, allowing for... A new penalty kill unit to come on for the team in red. Here's Walker. Ahead to McLaughlin. McLaughlin in with speed. Sends it back around behind the net. Finds Brodzinski, who had his pass picked. And the Badgers are able to force it to neutral and enter the offensive zone. Good stick lift there. And now a shot from a weird angle by Zach Erdahl. Close alert as always. Is able to snare it with the glove. 17.45 left in the second frame of regulation. Golden Gophers plus 10 in shots on goal now. 14 to four is what the scoreboard reads. Draw is going to be to the right of Justin Close. And one back to Lacombe. Lacombe spins away from the man pressing him as the Gophers Look to break out. They do. It's Huglin into the zone with speed. He's going to get stripped of it. And the Badgers able to clear all the way down. Great defensive play by alternate captain Tyler Inamoto. Inamoto has missed double-digit games this year due to injury, but he still leads the team with 55 block shots. Huglin with it down low. Back to the point. Now Myers. He plays catch with Lacombe. Lacombe over to Huglin. Back to Lacombe. Over to Myers. Near dot. Crosses it. And that pass was just barely tipped. And Huglin couldn't turn it around into a one-timer because he had to adjust the angle of his shot. They battle for it at neutral now. Wisconsin has it pinned on the boards. And Matthew de Saint fell able to get it ahead. Here's a chance for the Badgers. That one. Shot by Carson Bantle, easily sticked away by Close. And it will go all the way back to neutral. Power play time up for the Golden Gophers. Five on five play resumes. The Badgers have a shot blocked there. And it looks like the puck might be caught up in Lacombe's equipment. So whistles will sound. We'll get an offensive zone draw for the Badgers. Jackson Lacombe has had a huge season for the Golden Gophers. Leads the team with 19 assists and leads the team in block shots with 47. We also talked about it earlier, but he's plus 18 in terms of plus minus. That's a team high. As play resumes here, Ben Brinkman able to corral the faceoff draw. And now Perbix will try and get it Back to Brinkman, which is able to do so successfully. Brinkman circles around and gets it to neutral. Now Sorensen has the lone goal of this game. Flings it down low. Picked back up by Perbix. To the point for Brinkman. Brinkman rifles a shot in down low on Mo. He pads that one away. And a hit in the, to the boards. Perbix goes down head first, but no call assessed there. The fans don't like it. Josh S. with it now, as this one in front might have hit the outside of the post. Good look there, and it'll find its way back to neutral. 
Golden Gophers with another excellent opportunity on the doorstep. Shot placement just a little bit off. Faber with a nifty play to get it into the offensive zone. Grant Crookshank spins around, gets it to Bros. Bros cuts towards the net and fires one right into the chest of Mo. Puck will be frozen, face off coming up. For the Golden Gophers, their 17th shot on goal. They also have yet to lose a face off in this period. 7 0 is what the scoreboard reads in that category for the second frame. Make it 8 0 as Huglin wins the draw back to Kester. Kester gets it to Bros, and Bros trying to get it back to the point, had his pass tipped, and Minnesota will have to regroup in center ice. Mo gets the dump in by Minnesota. He's able to hand it off to Corson Kulemans. And Wisconsin begins to attack the other way. This one ends up bouncing around and finds its way to Justin Close, who's able to cover it. It's been a relatively sloppy game here in Minneapolis. Not a ton of super clean passes. Pucks kind of wobbling all over the ice. A lot of neutral ice play. Fourteen fifty-one in the second. Walker to take the draw from Minnesota. They're going to say it was dropped unfairly and redo it. Ryder Donovan at the dot again for the Badgers. Donovan wins it back. Here's a shot from the point, and it is steered away by the blocker of close. Minnesota able to clear it all the way down. This will go for icing as the Badgers touch up. And so... We'll redo the defensive zone draw here in Minneapolis. It'll be the same matchup at the faceoff circle. With Donovan and Walker. Donovan emerges victorious again and right off the draw, a quick shot there taken by Jake Gorniak and it saved by Justin Close. He didn't have too much trouble with that one. Third offensive zone draw in what feels like just as many seconds. Gophers have a three-man wall in front of Close and they are able to win this one. Lacombe skates it through neutral, finds Nevers. Nevers rips one from about 25 feet out. That one sticked away by Mo. Badgers to neutral. Send it in down low. Chasing it there, Liam Malquist. And Minnesota will win a board battle and get it back out to neutral. No icing here as the puck finds its way behind the red line. And Staudacher gets the bouncing puck at center, sends it directly back in and Heads off for a change. Ryan Johnson jumps in for him. As the Badgers enter the zone. Here's a chance for Malmquist. Rebound and no extra shot there. Jake Gorniak couldn't settle the puck down. Like I said, puck's been bouncing all night. And Jake Gorniak would have had a great look at the 4x6, but couldn't fire it away. Minnesota. Handling it in their defensive zone, trying to spring Pitlick was Johnson and it'll bounce over his stick and Mo will be the recipient of the errant pass as he freezes it. For the Badgers, Corson Kuhlemans wearing number four in red tonight. It's a first round pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's been very, very quiet, especially for someone who has four points against the Golden Gophers already this season and leads the team in assists and overall points. Badgers missing a few key players this evening as the Gophers win the draw in the offensive zone. Here's Faber, gets back to the point. Brodzinski had his shot blocked in front. A good look there, but Minnesota able to keep it in. Brodzinski skating in his 100th game for Minnesota, looking for a goal. Here's a wraparound chance, nothing more there as Johnson fights to keep it in. 
Played down low. Lacombe couldn't handle it. Faber snags it along the boards and back to McLaughlin. Now out to Faber. Ahead, the Gophers re-enter the zone with some speed. Far circle, good stick lift there, prevented McLaughlin from getting the shot away. Here's Johnson from the point. His shot ramps up high. Faber crosses it, look in front. Another shot goes just wide for the Golden Gophers. McLaughlin couldn't finish it off. Minnesota up to 20 shots on goal already. We're not even halfway through this game. Here's a good look as they spring out. It's Jackson Nelson. Nelson ends up losing the foot race and gets caught up to by a Wisconsin Badger, has to spin around and eventually turns over the puck as two Badgers collide at neutral ice, but the Golden Gophers can't capitalize on it. They re-enter the zone and close hugging that far post, nearly had to take a shot to the chest, but no due to a Great stick lift down low. Now Carson Bantle, pinned up against the boards. Kester grabs the loose puck and sends it all the way down. The referees immediately wave off icing. Mo goes to play it way out of his crease and he will send it along the boards and eventually out of play. Going back to what I was saying just a moment ago, Badger's missing a few key players here tonight. Roman Ashan being one of them. He's the leading scorer among active Wisconsin players against the Golden Gophers, 12 points in 15 games. They're also missing their captain, Tarek Baker, who has 80 points in his career. He's been out the last two series that the Badgers have played, this being the third one that he won't suit up for due to an injury. As Minnesota wins the draw and tries to set up in the offensive zone. Bros got his stick lifted as he tried to approach the net, and Kulamitz will center it for Wisconsin back at the other end. A good look there, but again, more bouncing pucks. No one can settle it down and no one can get a shot away. The Badgers reset. Trying to put it in front there was Kulamitz. He had his pass tipped. And Stardecker pins Stam Stangy behind the net as he tried to play the puck. Kept in by the Badgers. Here's a good chance for them and a great defensive play by Bros. Prevented a shot from about seven feet out. Looking to capitalize there was Carson Bantle. He's got a ton of minutes tonight, but the puck ends up wobbling in on close harmlessly, who's able to freeze it. Another name that we haven't called too many times tonight, Jesper Peltonen. Senior from Helsinki, Finland on defense. His sister was on the 2018 Olympic team for the Finns. His grandpa and father both represented Team Finland for hockey many years ago. Ben Myers has it now in the offensive zone. He's able to center it. Great play by Nyes to get away from his defender. He walks in, fires one on net. This one hits the Wisconsin crest of Mo, and he's able to cover it. 10-22 left in the first. Mariucci Arena about 75-80% full in the standard fan section. The ice box at the far end of the rink is packed to the teeth. Students really showing out for this border battle game as the Golden Gophers look to extend their win streak to seven and look to improve to two and one on the season against Wisconsin. Nyes tried to pass it back to the point and couldn't get it there. Jake Gorniak with a nice stick breaking up that play. But Minnesota will recover quickly and start on the way back. Here's Mason Nevers. He walks in. Drops it across, chance in front, big save, net comes tilting back, doesn't fall off his moorings, and now it does. The fans not happy again. Minnesota had a good look down low. The, met, the net was tilting backwards, ended up falling back to its original position only to be kicked off by Moe. Golden Gophers with some great puck movement there. 
as we get another look at the replay. Moe's left skate looks like it hit the post as he sprawled out. Again, appeared to be incidental, but it's the second time it's happened this game. The fans getting antsy. Walker at the faceoff dot for Minnesota. He'll win it back to Kester. Kester tries to shoot one on net. Jake Gorniak in the way of that one. Now Brodzinski. Brodzinski. Behind the red line over to Brinkman at the point. Brinkman tried to feed it back to Brodzinski as he was cutting towards the net. Couldn't do so. McLaughlin had a look in front and he got stripped. Gorniak the other way for the Badgers. He'll dump it in and head off on a line change. Badgers will get four new skaters onto the ice. Descent Sal here, and he can't finish the shot thanks to a nice defensive play there by Kester. Minnesota through neutral. They're able to dump it in and get some fresh legs onto the ice. Dodecker re-enters the game, Perbix and Crookshank. Just under nine minutes to go here in the second frame of regulation. Minnesota still the only team to have found the back of the net. Johnny Sorensen was the one who did it for him. As the Badgers get an offensive zone steal, trying to get it down low to Dominic Mersch, and he can't handle the fumbling puck. But the Badgers get it to the point. The defense by Minnesota forces a defenseman to just toss the puck in down low. Now picked up by Josh S. He gave it back to Max Johnson who tried a 50 foot shot. That one never got through and Minnesota will be forced to ice it here. Josh S got his first goal in 48 games the last time this Wisconsin team suited up against Notre Dame. Another player to, refer, to record his first goal of the season, Anthony Kerr, 5'11 sophomore from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Draw is gonna be to the right of close and the Golden Gophers will come up with it. Tossed all the way ahead only to be played by Quillemans. Nelson enters the zone for Minnesota, tries a slap shot, that one gloved away by Mo. Came in with some heat and Mo was up to the challenge. They reset, Faber with it now streaking through neutral. Perbix checks a man into the boards as he played the puck and Minnesota with a look in front, here's a shot just high, Rhett Pitlick with the wicked release but he could not hit his target. And now we're gonna get a whistle and a stoppage of play as the referees will discuss. No penalty appears to be the call. And it will be a penalty, but not a common one. It's too many men on the ice for the Golden Gophers. It's their first infraction of the game. It'll be served by Tristan Bros. And so we'll have a quick timeout here on Radio K Sports. 7.39 left in the second. Gophers lead 1-0.
Back to the action here in Minneapolis with the Gophers leading one to nothing. Some big news out of another Big Ten game. The Michigan Wolverines were defeated by the Notre Dame Fighting Irish by a score of four to one. So the Golden Gophers, who have 49 points in the Big Ten standings, one ahead of Michigan, have a chance to extend that margin with another victory tonight. Have the exact same records, or had the exact same record as the Michigan Wolverines coming into this evening's slate of games. Wolverines fall to 16-7-0. Golfers look to improve to 17-6-0. Draw one by Wisconsin. They enter the zone with some speed. Back to Kuhlemans at the point. He dishes across. Matthew DeSant foul has to spin around. He waits for it at the top after Kuhlemans got it back. Gopher got a stick knocked out of his hands as they put it in front, poke at it, and a big save, a late shove there. It looked like Walker was the one who was the aggressor. Thought there was a red jersey a little bit too close to his net minder. No penalty will be assessed. Players still huddled around Justin Close's net. Faceoff is going to be to his right. 119 left on the man advantage for the Wisconsin Badgers. The Golden Gophers got called for too many men on the ice. Tristan Bros serving the penalty. Pardon me, the aggressor there with the shove to the Wisconsin player in front of the net was Ben Myers. He remains on the ice for Minnesota and loses the draw. De Saint Fowl had it. Dished it across. Chance in front. And a shot by Stangy from the near circle is not on target. Ends up hitting the boards and finding its way into neutral and now back into the Badger defensive zone. Here they come with speed. Kuhlman's with it now. Across. Holding it there is Brock Caulfield. He's had a quiet game so far. As shot taken from down low by Carson Bantle, not even close to the net. Back to the point for Kuhleman. Carson Kuhleman across to Bantle. Pardon me, that was Caulfield who took the shot. That right into the block M crest on the jersey of Justin Close. 14th shot on goal of the game for Wisconsin. They still have yet to solve number one for Minnesota. Gophers still have about half a minute to kill on the Wisconsin power play. They lose the draw again. And it'll be played to S. S across, here's a chance in front. That one never got through, and Minnesota able to clear to neutral. They enter the offensive zone. Here's a shot, big save there. Nelson was the one who took it. Four, three, two, and one on the man advantage. So the Gophers kill off the power play for the Badgers. As now we get a whistle, it's gonna be icing against Minnesota, so another offensive zone draw for Wisconsin. 5.33 left to play in the first. If you're just joining us, Jason Rutman here on Radio K Sports. Thank you for tuning in. Border battle matchup here in Minneapolis. The final two games of the Golden Gophers regular season occurring this weekend. They look to finish on top of the Big Ten standings. This puck flipped up and out of play. You know, last year it was Wisconsin who were the regular season Big Ten champions. The Golden Gophers ended up going on to defeat them in the Big Ten tournament. Wisconsin still received a number one seed for the NCAA men's hockey tournament, but could not find a way to make it to the championship and win it all. To take the draw for Minnesota, Jackson Nelson is one of their better face-off takers, was up to a 600 win percentage about a month ago. 
and has fallen a little bit since then, but still a force to be reckoned with at the dot. Wisconsin able to come up with this one here. Here's a chance in front, great sliding block. Lacombe able to get his chest in front of that one. Shot not too hard, so he's okay. Tristan Bros back onto the ice after serving the two minutes for the too many men on the ice penalty against Minnesota. And they'll chip it out. Head off for a line change. Here comes line number two. Pitlick, Huglin, and Rose, who remains on the ice after chasing that puck down. Up to Pitlick. Huglin wipes out. Rose with it now. Pitlick again, plays pass and catch with Rose. tries a wraparound, couldn't finish it, and the net comes off again. The fans really not happy this time. Mo went down to try and cut off the angle for Tristan Bros when he went to wrap it around. And in the process of doing so, smacked the pipe again. So we get a look at the replay here. He actually kind of got pushed into his net by Luke Lamaster, his teammate, as he was trying to dive across and make a play at the puck with his stick. So for the third time this game, the Badgers are recipients of a fortunate net bounce as an ice crew member will come on now to examine the damage to the holes that are drilled into the ice where the moorings sit that keep the net in place. Wisconsin Badgers have a few interesting connections in the hockey world. Braden Morrison, who's wearing number nine for the Badgers tonight, he's had a quiet game, but on the season, uh, has skated in 17 games. His father, his father, his father Brendan, the all-time leading scorer for Wisconsin, and he won the Hobie Baker Award back in 1997. Of course, Brock Caulfield, brothers with current Montreal Canadian Cole Caulfield. Cole won the Hobie Baker last year, a tremendous season for him. And immediately after that, he joined the Habs for their Stanley Cup run, where they fell to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Another interesting connection. Don Granado, brother of head coach Tony Granado for the Badgers, is serving as the head coach of the Buffalo Sabres right now as Huglin gets the draw, skates it into the zone. Brinkman fires, that one just wide. As now we're gonna have a penalty against Minnesota. Aaron Huglin fell into Colin Moe and the referees say that it was a little bit too much contact for them. Moe ended up toppling over like a domino after him. But upon looking at the replay, Huglin definitely got pushed by a Wisconsin Badger, no question about it. He can't believe the call. But for Minnesota, they will be shorthanded for the second time this period. Huglin serving two for goalie interference. Badger's power play. 21 for 116 on the season. As they look to get another one here. Here's Desant Fell. To Kulamins. Back to Desant Fell. He skates the blue line. Now gets it to Desant Fell who originally dished it and a big shot block there by Ryan Johnson. Corson Kulamins took the shot, couldn't finish it and the Gophers Beneficiants of the loose puck, and they're able to clear it all the way down. Stick check there by Sammy Walkold had two goals and an assist in the first series against the Golden Gophers back in November. Wisconsin rotating the puck around the offensive zone, looking for a lane to shoot. Now they get one, but it's partially blocked. It looked like Blake McLaughlin was the one who got in the way of that one. Puck goes all the way back down as 
we approach the 45 second remaining mark in the man advantage for the Badgers. They struggle to get it through neutral and Minnesota will be able to clear it once again. Under three minutes now left in the second. No goals have been scored. Golden Gophers lead in shots 24-14. Wisconsin through neutral. Here they come, it's Jake Gorniak. Sends it all the way around. And now it'll find its way back to the point for Josh S. Back to the point for Josh S. S to Kuhlemans. Down low, Kuhlemans back to S. S, trying to line up a shot, plays pitch and catch with Kuhlemans, and he gets a shot off, but that one's easily steered away by Justin Close, and that'll do it for the Wisconsin man advantage. The Gophers force a turnover in the offensive zone after clearing it one final time. Aaron Huglin finds Ben Myers. Myers centers, chance in front, can't be finished. A great look there by Matthew Nyes, trying to get his first goal since returning from the Olympics. Now Kester with it, he has his shot blocked, and the Badgers will send it all the way back down. Ben Brinkman right on top of that one. He circles in the defensive zone, leaves it for Kester. Tosses it up to Nevers. Nevers cross ice pass, in with speed is Ben Myers. Myers spins around, sends a defender flying into the boards. And Minnesota will toss it towards the front of the net. Tip attempt by Ben Myers unsuccessful, and it'll be frozen by Jared Moe. So the Golden Gophers able to successfully kill off their second penalty of the period, and then catch fire on offense with a sustained chance in the zone. But cannot get a goal to show for it. The Badgers playing this Minnesota team really tough. They've only allowed one goal so far. They typically allow three and a half goals per game. That's what the average says. Wisconsin wins the draw and gets it to neutral. 75 seconds left in the second here in Minneapolis. Gophers looking to extend their lead to two. Badgers looking to tie it up at one apiece. Minnesota trying to break out of their defensive zone. They will, potentially a two on one here, but the pass a little bit too far for Blake McLaughlin, and he can't catch up to it. Under 60 seconds now. Lacombe with it. Cross ice pass. Staudecker, he hits the deck. Penalty coming up against the Badgers. It's a blatant trip close to the bench. Minnesota will have six attackers on five until the Badgers touch up. They enter the zone. It is McLaughlin who had the puck tapped off his stick. There was no possession by the Badgers and they blow the whistle immediately. I disagree with that one as do the majority of fans here. The booze raining down from the seats at Mariucci. Regardless, it's gonna be a tripping penalty to Sam Stange, sophomore from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. His first penalty of the game, the Wisconsin Badgers third. Minnesota 0 for 2 on the power play so far. They send Ben Myers out to take the draw. Myers, the Gophers' best faceoff man, wins it back. Lacombe with it at the point. He tosses it on net and they score! Might have been tipped in front, but regardless, the Golden Gophers go up 2 0. Jackson Lacombe sent one from the point and it does look like the Golden Gophers received the tip. Jackson Nelson was the one standing down low, sends it into the top corner, and Minnesota gets a power play goal and now have a 2-0 lead. The Wisconsin Badgers had been so good at killing off the power play recently. They were eight of their last nine, but they forfeit a goal there with under 30 seconds left. Jackson Nelson gets the tip in front of the net. Assists go to Huglin and Lacombe. Sixth goal of the season for Jackson Nelson. Pardon me, fifth goal of the season in 19 games played for him. For Lacombe, a team leading 20th assist for Huglin. He's up to five assists now on the season, 11 points in total. 
And that will do it for the second. The Golden Gophers will skate off to the locker room to a thunderous round of applause from the fans. A great end to what was an otherwise sloppy period with Minnesota getting a late goal and going into the final frame of regulation up 2-0. We'll be back with a breakdown of the second period and some anticipatory thoughts for the third in just a moment here on Radio K Sports.
Welcome back to Radio K Sports, coming to you live from 3M Arena at Mariucci. I'm Jason Rutman. The Golden Gophers have a 2-0 lead going into the third period, but before we discuss the events of the second and highlight what to expect in the third, I want to talk a little bit about Radio K Sports partnership with Project Main Street. Project Main Street was founded in 2006 with the goal of helping patients suffering from ALS offset the financial burden of the disease. The average cost that an ALS patient has to pay out of pocket is a quarter million dollars. That's right, $250,000. And so Project Main Street is dedicated to working to help people with ALS focus on fighting the disease and not worry as much about the financials. So make sure to check out Project Main Street on their social medias, on their website online and consider donating to a great cause. And so with that, we'll discuss the events of the second. It was, again, a sloppy period of play here in Minneapolis up until the very end. Sam Stange for the Badgers gets called for a tripping penalty as he takes down Matt Stodecker trying to enter the offensive zone. Golden Gophers, before that, were 0 for 2 on the man advantage, but they win the draw with about 30 seconds left. Get it back to Jackson Lacombe at the point who fires a 50-foot wrister on net and right before it reaches the blocker of Mo, it's Jackson Nelson who's able to tip it into the top corner, picking up his fifth goal of the season and putting the Golden Gophers up two to nothing. Now just a reminder, the Michigan Wolverines lost this evening to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish by a score of four to one. So the Golden Gophers have an opportunity to advance and make some more space for themselves in the Big Ten standings with only one game remaining after this one. Again, that'll be tomorrow night against the Wisconsin Badgers. So we'll take a look at some of these stats throughout the game so far. Shots on goal favor the Golden Gophers, 25 to 15. Power plays, one for three for Minnesota, 0 for two for the Badgers. Faceoffs, the Golden Gophers dominating at the dot, 31 to 11 is what the scoreboard reads. And then shots blocked, tied at eight apiece. So Minnesota, 20 minutes away from getting their seventh straight victory. Of course, they had a tremendous comeback victory and emerged with a 6-4 W over the Penn State Nittany Lions the last time they were out. They overcame a three-goal deficit and ended up taking both games at Pagula Ice Arena in University Park. Taking a look towards the third, the Golden Gophers are probably gonna be focusing on keeping the puck moving, keeping it flat, and making sure that the Badgers don't have a ton of time in the neutral zone. They've been able to generate a few chances by finding loose pucks there and forcing it into the offensive zone. Justin Close has really played a great game so far, 15 for 15 in terms of, in terms of saves and shots faced. He had one of his best games of the season last Friday against Penn State where he made 37 saves on 38 shots faced. The Golden Gophers picked up a win in that game as well. So, third period underway here in Minneapolis. Gophers 20 minutes away from another victory and a critical one over their rivals from Wisconsin. Puck batted around. Minnesota offensive zone eventually cleared by the Badgers. Student section here, very raucous as Nyes enters the zone for Minnesota. He tries to back in, centers for Myers, pass jumped over his stick, Nevers there, gets pinned in the corner. Myers tries to chip away at it and it'll end up on a Wisconsin stick. All the way down now, only to be picked up and then stolen right back again by De Saint Fell. Matthew De Saint Fell had two goals and two assists against Notre Dame. He has 10 points in his last four games, still searching for his first point in this one. He has it behind the net, ends up getting stripped of it. 
tried to hand it off to a teammate, but the Gophers were able to get it. And now it is sent back out to Corson Kuhlemans at neutral. Kuhlemans passes it across, and the puck ends up getting sent in on Justin Close, who will freeze it. 18.38 left in the third. Gophers with a 2-0 lead here. Shots on goal reading 25-16 in favor of the team clad in white, maroon, and gold. Face-off draw to the right of Justin Close. It'll be one back. Sammy Walker picks up the victory at the dot. And Minnesota will have the task of clearing it out of their defensive end. Here's a stretch pass from Brinkman that jumped over the stick of Walker. Would have been a breakaway for him. Regardless, McLaughlin has it now. Gets it to Walker. Walker back to the point for Brinkman. Brinkman over to Kester, who chips it in down low after the pass came in with a little bit too much speed. Look in front for Minnesota, but they couldn't grab it. Sammy Walker with another great opportunity, but the puck continues to roll here at 3M Arena at Miriucci. Players really having trouble settling it down this evening. Now the far circle is McLaughlin. Pardon me, that was Brodzinski. He got taken down and ended up sending the puck all the way back towards Justin Close, who plays it to Mike Kester. Kester with it now. Gets it to neutral. Huglin got stripped of it, and it finds its way back to Mike Kester. Kester ahead to Bros and Bros off sides all the way across the ice sheet was Pitlick, who had already entered the offensive zone, thinking that Bros would be able to skate in with a little bit more speed. Huglin and Caden Brown will face off for this draw, and Caden Brown will be the victor there. Brown, 5'11", freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Close gets the puck behind his own net, plays it around the boards and all the way out. Pitlick puts a little bit of pressure on Zach Erdahl, who has to send it across in his defensive zone. Now here come the Badgers. Jackson Lacombe with a great defensive play is able to snag a loose puck after Wisconsin couldn't handle it coming into the zone. Played around to neutral. Pitlick chips at it. Huglin joins the poking and now Kuhlemans will come up with it. He walks in with some speed. Tries to get by Johnson who's able to get a stick in the way of his shot. It ends up weakly fluttering behind the net and now played along the far half wall. Here come the Badgers again. Good pressure there by Liam Malquist, who's able to keep the puck in for the Badgers. Malmquist took a penalty earlier in this game. The Golden Gophers could not convert on the power play attempt. And as Wisconsin gets some fresh legs onto the ice and tries to break out. They do, here's Corson Kuhlemans. Kuhlemans backs in, tries to backhand it around the boards, partially whiffed at it, and Minnesota forces it out. Now Crookshank, in with speed, tries to center it, and it was, it appeared to be Jack Perbix down low who couldn't tap home the, the pass. Now Myers with the move, he walks in, in front, gets his own rebound and scores! Ben Myers! A Herculean effort for Minnesota, and they're up 3-0. Ben Myers gets the puck in the offensive zone, puts a beautiful dangle on at the far circle. He's able to force a shot up high on Mo. It ends up hitting Mo's blocker, or pardon me, his glove, getting tipped into the air towards the other side of the net. And Myers, following his shot around the back of the net, picks it up from about six feet out and snipes it above Moe's outstretched arm. Minnesota up 3-0 with just over 15 minutes left to play. Mike Kester picks up another assist. He's had a good game. 
for Myers. It is his team leading 30th point. It's also a career high 12 goals for him. For Kester, it is his 10th assist of the season. He's up to 12 points in total, so a good look there for the Toronto Maple Leafs prospect. And Minnesota has three goals on 26 shots. They re-enter the zone now. Here's a look from Walker. His shot sent just a little bit wide. Flies all the way around the boards back to Johnson. The ice box is loud as ever there thanks to the efforts of Ben Myers as McLaughlin chases this puck in. He takes out a man deep in the zone and Johnson will get it at the point. He tries a shot. That one never got through. Good block out front and the Badgers will skate it out. Down low, Faber and Max Johnson going at it in the corner. Walker joins that battle as Faber steps out. Faber, one of three Golden Gophers on the current roster to represent Team USA at the Olympics. They came back for the second game of the Penn State series last weekend. Kester clears it up the boards to neutral. 1340 left in the frame. Here's Strenge, tried to get it in front and Caden Brown couldn't do anything with that pass. So the Gophers and Badgers continue to play the puck along the boards. Centering attempt intercepted by Ben Brinkman who skates it the other way for Minnesota. He pulls up, dumps it in, and now will head for a change. Jackson Lacombe onto the ice in his place. Lacombe picks it up, puts a soft one on net. That one sticked away into the corner by Moe. Moe, the former Golden Gopher, has played well this game, but his defense has not been of huge assistance to him. He's faced 27 shots, four of them went in. One of them wasn't really his fault. And great effort by Ben Myers just a few minutes ago. And then another goal was a tip in front when the Golden Gophers were on the power play as Jackson Nelson netted his fifth of the season. Face-off draw won by the Gophers, shot right off the draw. That one saved by Moe. Jared Moe was taken with the 184th pick of the NHL entry draft. It's in the sixth round by the Winnipeg Jets. 7-13-3 with about three goals allowed per game in his time as a Badger. Staudacker tried to pass it behind the net and that was picked off pretty easily by the Badgers. Lacombe gets it back. And now Perbix. He'll send it over to neutralize. And Lacombe will make another great defensive play intercepting a Wisconsin pass. Look in front for the Badgers, but nothing more there. S with it now, trying to get it Back towards the blue line, he's able to do so, but Wisconsin can't keep it in. Liam Malmquist had it momentarily. Attempted to send it over to Josh S. again, who lost it. And now Perbix in for Minnesota. Perbix spins around, look in front for Myers, who nearly was able to put it home again. A nice save by Mo prevented that. Minnesota now up to 31 shots on the evening, plus 15 compared to Wisconsin. The faceoff dot, they still hold a huge advantage, 35-13. Make it 35-14 after the Badgers pick up the victory on this draw. This one cleared all the way down, no icing. Ryan Johnson is able to get it to neutral on the stretch pass and it was Mason Nevers having the puck poked away from him. Now Matthew Nyes puts some pressure on the Badgers defense down low, forcing them to clear to center. 
Here's Matthew Descent foul. He had it momentarily, got stripped, and Johnson had his pass batted away and into the stands by Wisconsin Badger. So a souvenir for a fan and another neutral zone draw. Golden Gophers have a 6-1 advantage in shots on goal this period. They got their one goal from Ben Myers, assist to Mike Kester. Badgers emerge victorious on another draw here. As they played around at neutral, Blake McLaughlin knocks a stick out of a Badger hand and tries to apply some pressure. He's able to force a turnover in the offensive zone, but Wisconsin able to recover quickly, and eventually they just tie up the Gophers on the boards. Now Minnesota gets it back in front, quick wrist shot, goes a little bit high of the bar, and the Badgers will skate it back. Ben Brinkman in the way there as Minnesota breaks out to neutral. Puck sent in down low, there to retrieve Max Johnson. On the season, Johnson five goals, two assists for seven points. Adding to his illustrious college career, he's a grad transfer for them. Stangy picks it up for the Badgers and they move it ahead. Drop pass, now back down low, look in front and it was not clean, Stangy couldn't finish it. Tristan Bros the other way for Minnesota, fends off a defenseman before taking a hard hit into the boards and he is slow to get up. He will uh, wobble to the bench. A tough hit there and before he can get there, he's forced to pick up the puck at neutral. He sends it across, chance in front, shot just high. Tristan Bros nearly turned an injury into an offensive opportunity. Aaron Huglin was the one who took the shot and he sent it just high. Bros still a little weak as he's finally able to skate to the bench. Hoping that he's all right. Took a really hard ride into the boards while trying to get past a Wisconsin defenseman. Now Sorensen with some good defense allows Pitlick to get the puck. He tries to cross it for Crookshank. Crookshank couldn't control. Sorensen there to pick up the loose change. Back out to the point for Johnson. Johnson across. Down low, rotating behind the net is Brock Faber. Faber steps back and forth, gets it back to Johnson. Johnson down low, cross ice pass for Sorensen, a little too hot to handle. And so another board battle will ensue with the Badgers emerging with the puck. 8.51 left in regulation here. Wisconsin still looking for their first goal. Puck cleared to neutral after it briefly entered the Minnesota defensive zone. Now Faber got his body in front of a shot. It still ended up finding a way to get to Close, who was able to glove it pretty easily while hugging that far post. And so we will have another brief break in the action, but instead of heading to break, I want to tell you a little bit about our podcast. Sports Hour podcast airs every 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesday evenings on the radio stations associated with Radio K, 100.7 and 104.5 FM. You can check it out on Spotify using the QR code on your screen. It's also on Apple Podcasts. And if you don't have either of those apps, feel free to look it up online. It is on the Radio K sports website. Furthermore, if you're interested in getting involved with the podcast, we are looking for more people to do interviews with um, and more people to get involved. So shoot us an email at radiokesports at gmail.com or contact us on social media if you're interested in getting involved. Players now back on the ice after the skate crew took care of some of the shavings created by 
the players constant stopping and starting. 3-0 is the score here in Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers eight and a half minutes away from picking up their seventh straight win and their second straight against the Wisconsin Badgers. Brock Caulfield, who's had a very quiet game for Wisconsin, only called his name a few times, will take the draw for them. He leads all the Badger forwards and assists with 11, only second on the team to Corson Kuhlemans. As a chance in front and they score! Ben Myers gets his second of the game from a ridiculous angle. I'm not sure how that one was able to sneak past Jared Moe, but the Golden Gophers now up four to nothing. Ben Myers returns from the Olympics and he continues his red hot play, had three assists against Penn State, now has two goals here in this game against Wisconsin. Mason Nevers sets him up and somehow he's able to sneak that one in past Mo, who is really, really hugging that post tightly. But leave it to Ben Myers to find the smallest of openings and take care of business. So the Golden Gophers now really starting to mount a big lead against the Badgers. Four nothing is the score. Ben Myers gets his second of the game. His 13th of the season. Assist is gonna go to Mason Nevers on the primary and Matthew Nyes on the secondary. Puck now at neutral, sent in on Mo. He plays it back with his stick and the Badgers will look to advance up ice. However, it's played around in neutral and eventually chipped in down low. It wasn't a clean entry, but a quick turnover here by Ben Brinkman. A chance for Wisconsin off the pipe. The best look of the game hits iron and Ben Brinkman then is able to block another shot. Clears it down low, Blake McLaughlin is able to chase it down. He's able to get around a defender, send it back to Huglin who walks in. Huglin avoids a stick lift, rotates behind the net, looking for some help, ends up dropping it off to Ryan Johnson. Johnson skates down low behind the net and it will be flipped in front before getting back to Johnson. Johnson fires that one blocker save by Mo. Good look there for the Golden Gophers as they look to extend their lead to five. Puck continues to sit in the offensive zone. Huglin trying to body Strangy off the puck. He will, throws back onto the ice. He rips a shot, that one just high. Back to the point now for Minnesota. Here's Pitlick with it. Now to Bros. Bros down low. Back towards the far circle. From the point, shot from Faber. That one soaked up by Mo. But the Golden Gophers with a huge push offensively there. Ends only with a nice save by Jared Mo. Minnesota has doubled the shots on goal of the Wisconsin Badgers, 34-17. Teams reading equal in block shots at nine apiece. Faceoff is plus 20 in favor of the Golden Gophers, 36-16. Make it 37-16 as Jackson Nelson wins this draw. Minnesota able to keep it in thanks to the efforts of Perbix. Now down low, short angle shot, that one saved. Back to Stardecker at the point, Stardecker forces it back in down low. He'll man the blue line as the puck is picked up by Grant Cruikshank. Cruikshank spinning around. First year as a Golden Gopher after spending three seasons at Colorado College for him. This one shot on net by Lacombe, tipped in front. It looked like it was Nelson again with the good tip, but saved by Mo. This Wisconsin team starting to look very, very fatigued even though they did not play last weekend. The last time they took the ice was February 13th against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But this is a tough Gopher team to keep up with. There's a reason that they're ranked fourth in the nation. 5.45 to play here at 3M Arena at Mariucci. Brinkman walks in with the puck. He rips one. That one kick save 
by Mo. Another chance for the Golden Gophers. Won't go, pass just wide. Corson Kulemans appeared to go down there after some incidental contact. He'll skate gingerly to the bench as offsides will be called against Wisconsin and we'll get a neutralized draw. Minnesota with another great look. Ben Brinkman frees himself right after the faceoff and he fires one on net. A ridiculous kick save by Mo is able to keep this game sitting at four nothing and Minnesota had a second chance but shot went a little bit wide. They win the draw again, approaching 40 faceoff wins on the evening and they kick it to neutral. Dumped all the way back in after Wisconsin briefly recovered. And taken in the offensive zone, shot on net. That one without much power on it. Doesn't even leave the ice surface and it'll be Justin Close who's able to put his trapper on top of it for a frozen puck. The Golden Gophers tonight have gotten goals from Johnny Sorensen, Jackson Nelson, and then the last two have been scored by Ben Myers, both of them coming in this third frame. Myers, the first Golden Gopher this season to cross the 30 point threshold as Tristan Brose enters the zone for Minnesota. He gets checked up against the boards, is able to keep the puck, gets it in front for Huglin, who's shut down on the shot attempt. Huglin able to get it back. Gets it to Johnson. Johnson puts one on net. Pitlick stick was in the way. Minnesota resets. Here's Pitlick. Down low. In front. Huglin couldn't finish it off. He got his stick lifted there by Strangi, who starts back the other way. Strangi looking to receive the pass. This one tipped just wide by the outstretched stick of Brock Faber. And Minnesota will recover. Bros has his outlet pass picked off. Might be a two on one for Wisconsin. Faber in the way. This one saved by Justin Close. A really solid wrister. A lot of space and time to set that one up there for Wisconsin. And more specifically, Josh S. Saved by Justin Close. Gophers will play the same Wisconsin team again tomorrow night. Puck drop at 7 p.m. It is senior night, so some of the older guys on this Minnesota team will be honored for their efforts as here's a break the other way. Skating in with speed, Crookshank fires. Big save, windmill, and the glove there is Mo, or I should say a half windmill. He's able to corral it and slam it down to the ice for a frozen puck. 3.50 left to play play in this one. Minnesota up four to nothing after two third period goals by Ben Myers. Looking to extend their lead to five. Face off ends up going right back to Mo, who immediately freezes it again. Golden Gophers have now scored four goals in their last three games. They won 4-1, then 6-4 against Penn State. Have mounted a 4-0 lead here. Puck in the, the skates there of Liam Malmquist. And Minnesota is able to keep it in the offensive zone for the time being. Now it's taken out. Malmquist with speed into the zone. Plays stick check there with Jackson Lacombe who wins that battle and the Gophers re-enter the zone. Sorensen loses an edge as he tries to spin around. Badger's back the other way. Malmquist alongside Strangi and this shot from Strangi tipped way up into the boards. Nice save there by Close who remains perfect. Minnesota the other way. Here's a chance. No. Rebound. Second chance for Sorensen. Went just wide. Now Kester down low. Pushed in front, no one was there to tap at home. Lacombe recovers, he tosses it down low. Myers fires and scores! The Golden Gophers, now up 5-0. Ben Myers has a hat trick. 
And not just that, it's a natural hat trick. All in one period, Ben Myers gets the pass from down low and he smacks it into the top corner of the net. As the beanies come raining down here in Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers up 5-0. This place is on fire. Ben Myers having a career game for himself with three goals, all of them coming in the third. For Myers, the assists come from Mason Nevers and Jackson Lacombe, the icebox on their feet. For Ben Myers, the loudest the arena has been all evening. A really exciting game for him. It's the first hat trick of his career. He had scored two goals in one game four times. This is the first time he has hit the triple mark. And on top of that, to make it even sweeter for Minnesota, they now are up 5-0 on Wisconsin. Players back on the ice for the draw. All but a lost cause here for the Badgers with just over two and a half minutes to play. They will spend some time regrouping and trying to come out with a better effort for tomorrow night's matchup in the regular season finale against the Golden Gophers. Pitlick with it now for Minnesota. He elects to dump it in down low, skates after it slowly. Puck finds its way to the front of the net, but there's no Golden Gopher there to play it. Brinkman gets it after it was sent out to neutral and he'll loft it back in. Turnover in the defensive zone. Here comes Pitlick, tries to center it. Great stick there. That looked like it was Luke Lamaster getting his twig in the way. Minnesota, another chance in front. This one comes off the stick of Ryan Johnson, a wrister from about 35 feet out and goes directly into the glove of Moe without any more commotion. Under two minutes to play now. Minnesota having a tremendous game against these Wisconsin Badgers. Up in shots, 43 to 20. Up at the faceoff dot, 41 to 19. Ben Myers has himself a hat trick. Mason Nevers has two assists. Jackson Lacombe has two assists. An all around great effort for them as they get a, a chance again. Looks in front, and Nelson has his shot rejected by Mo. Wisconsin back the other way. Kuhlemans had it for a second, turned it over to Cruikshank. Cruikshank tried to put a move on a man. He ended up losing the puck. Jack Purvix was trailing him, and Purvix will just send it all the way around the boards and head off for a change. Sorensen and Nevers hop back onto the ice for Minnesota. 75 seconds left to play as this puck shot from neutral all the way down and into the mesh above the boards on the other end. So the Golden Gophers with a statement win here tonight against Wisconsin. Only 74 seconds left to play. Remember, the Michigan Wolverines lost to Notre Dame tonight, so the Golden Gophers will get a boost in the standings. They'll improve to 17-6-0 on the season, while the Wolverines fall to 16-7-0. Gophers also have the overtime loss to Wisconsin, which counts as a point for them. They're gonna be offsides here. Or no, the referees wave it off to late offsides, they say, criteria for play to stop was not met. So we're down to 40 seconds here in Minneapolis, Wisconsin trying to get at least one goal on Justin Close who's looking for a 20 save shutout tonight. Into the corner, Gorniak had it, he got stripped. 25 to play, sent up the boards to neutral and cleared all the way down Minnesota We'll get five fresh skaters onto the ice as 
The fans take to their feet here at 3M Arena at Mariucci, applauding their team for a tremendous game against their border rivals, the Wisconsin Badgers. Clock ticks down, and that will do it. The Golden Gophers win 5 nothing against the Wisconsin Badgers. A dominant performance from them and a career game for Ben Myers, who returns from the Olympics, gets three assists against Penn State in his first game back, and now gets himself a hat trick here against the Wisconsin Badgers. Taking a look at the scoring summary, Johnny Sorensen opened up the stat sheet about six minutes into this one. He was assisted by Grant Cruikshank and Mike Kester. After that, it was Jackson Nelson with the lone goal in the second, tipping a wrist shot home. Jackson Lacombe was the shooter there, and Aaron Huglin set him up. Third goal came from Ben Myers as Mike Kester passed him the puck, giving him his second assist of the night. And then after that, Myers scored again. Mason Nevers and Matthew Nyes picked up helpers. And finally, Myers was able to crank a one-timer into the top corner of the net to complete the natural hat trick. Mason Nevers, another assist. Jackson Lacombe picks up his second of the game as well. Taking a look at team stats for this one, the Golden Gophers outshot the Badgers 44 to 20. Wisconsin, a team that normally averages around 33 shots on goal per game. So a great defensive effort for the team in maroon and gold. The Golden Gophers took two penalties. The Wisconsin Badgers took three. Minnesota killed off both of their power plays. Wisconsin one for three on the penalty kill. Block shots read in at nine apiece for both teams and the Golden Gophers were having one of their best games of the season at the faceoff dot, 43-19 in favor of them at the end of this one. Three stars of the game and the third star, Jackson Lacombe, two assists on the season. He maintains a team high, 21 assists. Second star of the game, Justin Close. He picks up a shutout for the Golden Gophers, improving to 10-3-0 on the season. And the first star of the game, of course, Ben Myers, the first hat trick of his career, leading the Golden Gophers to a win over the Wisconsin Badgers. So for Jason Rutman here on Radio K Sports, thank you for taking the time this evening to turn in to this Gopher men's hockey game. We know that you enjoyed the outcome. Hope that you have a nice evening and we'll be back for more Gopher hockey tomorrow on Radio K Sports.